Thank you very much, Professor Krishna. And I would like to thank the organizers for this excellent opportunity to me to speak here. And uh, of course, the chairman asked me to give a brief, brief introduction about me. I'm essentially a senior director of the Department of Information Technology, but I'm involved with the Middle of Asia from the beginning for the last decade. So I will be largely talking about the Middle of Asia activities here. Uh, we are essentially for the ICT for the grassroots development. In fact, initially we started the activity with the MIT Media Lab. And uh, when we started this, we thought, uh, you know, we will, uh, we went around and we tried to identify some of the areas and which are the areas which should address. And ultimately we came down to, uh, you know, I think that I think probably education and empowerment of the disabled and also the healthcare area and also the livelihood generation, which includes the, uh, you know, agriculture and the crafts. And the other some of the areas which I have taken up initially, and uh, the model which we adopted essentially you know, earlier, I think uh, someone has said uh, uh, our academic organizations were concentrating on the blue sky R and D or international R and D. I mean, we thought we bring the focus there for the developmental activities in India. I mean, in fact, uh, we try to develop some uh, research hubs in uh, some of the academic organizations, and uh, we try to uh, define. Uh, the uh, agenda, the innovation agenda in some of the area, some of the application areas, and uh, we started developing certain technologies, and uh, then uh, uh, the model we do when we develop a proof of concept idea, and then we uh, try to do some pilot testing in the field, and then see how to really uh, take it up in the large scale. And uh, as someone has said, you know, there are so many issues in how to really take the large scale deployment activities. I think of some of the technologies, I think it's easy. People accept the technology you know, easily. And some of the technologies, I think, uh, that requires a larger framework and uh, the multi-stakeholders environment, uh, in including the governments. And uh, then the time frames for the taking the technology to the field uh, have largely varied, uh, uh, you know, time, you know, from the technology to technology. And in fact, we, have articulated about, you know, I, in about, I think, 75 or so ideas. And uh, actually, most of the ideas came from the um, the academic organizations and some of the non-governmental organizations and some industry and some of the, uh, you know, the research students and innovation students and all those things. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think some of the things that already been said, in fact, uh, um, there is not uh, so much for me uh, to say it here. Um, let me slip this slide. Yeah, in fact, uh, what we did to require uh, for the available to ICD based solutions. So essentially, uh, you know, is innovation initially, I mean, I would say some kind of the technological innovation and we require the market innovation. I think probably uh, some of us are able to do some uh, proof of concept, and I think maybe um, some of the people are, you know, I, I think even able to do some kind of the technological innovation and try to showcase in the field in a small scale. And then the problem is then how to really uh, change into large scale deployments. And the accessibility, I think uh, someone uh, said, you know, why the technology is, you know, some are technology available and uh, people are not accepting them. I think uh, that's also a lot to do how much value for the money we're able to offer. And some are technologies like uh, the railway reservations have been accepted by the people very well. And uh, the table TV has been accepted by the people, uh, of course, very well. And we would also feel uh, from the looking at some of these, you know, technically some of the interfaces, in fact, uh, the, you know, the language barrier is one of the barriers for, you know, reaching the ICT for the common man. So, I mean, there are efforts, in fact, how to address that. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, you have to provide the information to the people in the field in their own languages and sometimes you know people they 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 can speak but but they can't write also then i think something like you know the audio interfaces and uh, some of the, these technology barriers are there and there, there are some efforts uh, to really address these things and the last milk connectivity i think is important though we have the nkn kind of things for the high level r d purposes and uh, we have almost uh, the fiber, you know, reaching every block. But, but I think uh, still, I think we have to look at the last mill connectivity, maybe some kind of broadband wireless kind of things. Uh, are in, but in fact, we have taken up the large projects uh, initially for the demonstration, you know, uh, about uh, you know, using um, Wi-Fi, you know, between the Lucknow Kanpur belt, about 85 
kilometers where we were able to some provide some services in a pilot basis in Andhra Pradesh I think uh, with some of the NGOs in fact uh, we did a uh, somewhat large job deployment covering by about 10 lakh population 32 nodes and everything and uh, providing m multiple services including the yield learning where they a teacher from Hyderabad is able to teach about you know I mean uh, some half a dozen schools simultaneously and also a uh, doctor from Hyderabad is able to address the problems of the uh, the patients about 350 kilometers away. And I think some of these things are, uh, I mean, still operating in the field. Um, and in fact, I already mentioned uh, in audio, video mode and textual mode. And uh, if you look at, in fact, uh, I mean, the governance of the Department of IT uh, has been putting up, I think, 100,000 common service centers, and I think probably grow, growing into 250,000 common service centers. And then ultimately, you know, how you really reach information that people uh, we have, uh, you know, various options available to us. I think, uh, depending upon the what application we are looking at, I think, you, you know, every technology has its place. And, you know, I mean, uh, the I ask based thing and uh, mass media channels, in fact, uh, uh, the radio, TV, some of the community radio examination, what you have done, and localized information, capture the data from the field and also deliver the field and also somewhat interactively uh, with some of the agriculture universities, we try to deploy uh, some of the community radio there. And we did some community TV experimentation where uh, the community TV can be uh, utilized, uh, uh, really providing certain services like uh, training and embroidery, are uh, you know teaching some language courses and I think some of the wonderful things uh, uh, people are done in the field uh, the grassroots people when you are able to train them they're able to create the content itself I think that is a in actual inversion uh, in ultimately you know if I mean uh, of course instead of people being only consumers I think if you can able to make them creators I think that will be of course a wonderful thing but we did only small thing and uh, in fact uh, I, we have some videos created by the people in the field and we try to transmit them but I think it's only small experimentation but I feel uh, that could be one of the things uh, where I mean which could uh, essentially lead to the employment uh, from the grassroots itself and uh, the people can uh, uh, really create the content and feed into mass media or anything. Uh, and of course, mobile and handle services is one of the things, you know, where we are trying to apply everywhere and everything is available. I think most of the things are available on the mobile services and uh, in internet and uh, satellite based. Yeah, in fact, in the satellite based services, we are working with the Rehabilitation Council of India and uh, about in the field, we are working about, I think, 480 uh, in NGOs and organizations to create content and uh, deliver uh, to the people in the field, the disabled children uh, through some of the NGOs that is operating, but that is operating the, through the satellite itself. So these things are there and uh, the affordability is always important. In fact, uh, the sustainable effort will be go together and uh, some of the technologies in my experience are able to, uh, from the day one, people are able to accept them and uh, that uh, depends upon the type of technology. But certain uh, things, I think, government support you know, is really required because we did some experimentation on the, some of the agriculture uh, where I think probably uh, some of the initiatives require the acceptability by the government department itself and uh, that, that happens uh, in the sense with the time and because every government departments have their own plans and everything when you showcase a technology in the field and uh, trying to get into mainstream deployment activity is to do you know, how quickly the departments can uh, take it up and uh, what kind of finances they can do and uh, the technology robustness itself. Yeah, I, mean, I think I would just, uh, just uh, speak about some of our experiences in various areas, the healthcare, livelihood generation, education, and rural community and impairment of disabled. I mentioned some of them. Uh, we try to you know, utilize, uh, someone said, uh, the, uh, the handle, power of handle the way back in 2002. I think all of us know the health workers in the field, they're supposed to collect the data from house to house and uh, create the, the reports and feed into the primary health center and then go, go, goes to pl pl planners. But I think, you know, I mean, effectively, this will take anywhere from uh, two months of one year, in fact, uh, ultimately for the planning purpose, the information is not at all uh, 
timely and we thought you know i mean we empower we will provide the handle device to health workers and we worked with university of rochester uh, some time ago and uh, we put a small pilot in the, this one and uh, you create the programs and handle device and take the field data and put into into network and uh, i think within a just within a day or two uh, i mean all the field data is available uh, to the pl planners where they can use it for the disease surveillance or anything and also we are able to utilize uh, the power of the handle for the health workers to really administer the minimum uh, drugs you know they do the polio this one the drugs so when so the handle device uh, the device can tell you okay you have given the polio uh, this uh, vaccination one and after two weeks you know it is actually due to to so automatic alerts and everything you are able to create and these are some of the experimentation what you have done but they gave us certain experiences and uh, and these are the experiences are available uh, and I, I would also feel i think uh, many more field experiences Uh, are of course important to really in ultimately come out with a robust deployment models and we also did some telemedicine in fact our focus is on the primary telemedicine activity you know i think uh, uh, where we, we, we tried with various ideas like you know you put a kiosk or or you know you have person with some uh, primary telemedicine equipment uh, you can go on his back back around where are the patients are expected to be and uh, he got some connectivity whatever the telephone or whatever mobile phone and uh, but then you have to try it because where there is no the doctor available there probably we try to do whether uh, a person with a school experience alone uh, can be trained and uh, he will able to uh, uh, capture the patient's information and also to link up with the doctor those experimentation we have done and also the government of india or the state government's primary health care infrastructure is available and we try to put uh, some of the telemedicine uh, uh, framework there and see uh, what is uh, the, the essential uh, the biomedical equipment which require at a primary health center and community health center we went around some of the Uh, the experts like uh, you know some of the aspects like all minister medical sciences and narayana vidyalaya and uh, the technology expert ict experts and also ngos and also medical doctors and we came out with uh, some uh, uh, framework for what is the minimal equipment required for the uh, sub center what is the minimum minimal equipment you require for the primary center and we are uh, we did some field deployments some kind of pilot field deployments in uh, trivandrum area i mean those things are available now they are available and we are uh, trying to handle with the government of kerala so that they can take them over and uh, they operate them in the long run but now we are planning to do some kind of uh, uh, trying to see how we can scale up some of these activities in large scale and as morning session i think someone said uh, the health on health records are we feel is important to be based on our discussions so we are trying to see if we can really create a uh, framework for the capturing the health you have got the electronic health record but of course there will be so many policy and ethical challenges uh, like uh, the uh, confidential health information probably uh, i mean i feel the you know i mean we feel that they can be addressed okay okay you know thing and three minutes more okay uh, we did some uh, very good uh, experiments on the uh, the livelihood generation we did uh, let me come to the uh, some of the projects actually the sagu stands for e agriculture uh, we did a project in uh, andhra where uh, you take uh, the, we are actually here uh, you know exploiting the power of the, the you know i mean images you know you could go to the field and capture the uh, status of the crops by taking the in, in images pictures and also you know by observation and put into some it framework and capture for, for all the fields around and send it to some centralized th database so which can be accessed by the it experts and i mean the agricultural experts and they they would advise they would then then deliver the uh, 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 of course advice but here the interesting point is you know here you are able to capture uh, the you know information of the you know each field uh, in, along with his history you know it is like a family doctor knowing about a family so it is able to treat well so here are able to have the history of the field so so that, you know you know what happened yesterday day 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 yesterday so that you are able to give a for our proper advice and then uh, the people were happy we also try to put in a revenue model to see you know how much people will pay and uh, you know so some people paid some people said it's a 
government of india program if i should i pay you know any government service has to be free and then uh, you know we have to see then how to really and means them okay you know unless you don't pay they know i mean the sustainable bonds will be difficult that is one hand and on the other hand you have to work with government uh, you know i mean uh, mechanisms in of how to make it uh, sustainable and acceptable by, by them and we in fact we have uh, uh, given about a year one lakh at, i mean it's about 0.1 million uh, i mean advisors and uh, we also worked with ngos and uh, uh, that kind of stuff and uh, Uh, and the, I mean, in fact, uh, then the farmers also said in the Natural Agri Advisory, we also require other you know things like uh, financial services and also you know input services. So we came out with a framework called Integrated Agriculture Pro Program, and we start, we are taking a small pilot in Uttar Pradesh, but we have to uh, now we are in the stage of uh, looking at now how to scale scale it up. So I think your time is up. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Sure. Uh, just I am uh, switching up, and there is a. I mean, also mentioned some other technologies are easy to deploy. Uh, we developed uh, some computer-aided design tool for embroidery. Uh, you know, in India, I think probably just uh, you know, I mean, half a minute. Uh, you know, usual embroidery. You know, all of us know. You know, uh, people will design a paper design. They create a block and they do. And, you know, I mean, every time they create a new design, it is a you know somewhat new experience again. So it will take so much of time. So I mean, here we can, we this is very simple. Anybody can create this. We create a you know computer design tool for embroidery and uh, where people can store the designs and they can do so many you know kind of the operations and they. Can that turn around uh, for the new this designs will be high and in fact this has been accepted uh, you know people are uh, try to pay work okay, how much you have to pay please tell us we will pay you know I mean this some of the technologies are uh, you know people accept easily and we are now de 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 deploying that in fact we deployed about half a dozen clusters of various embroidery designs in India. Well, uh, I can go around, but uh, some of the initiatives in disability sector, we developed a tool for, you know, there are schools for the mentally retarded ch children where the teachers have to assess how the child is growing from time to time. And uh, so here we developed a tool where, you know, teachers are able to track the development of the you know, of each child. And again, we developed eight schools and we are trying to develop 100 schools now based on the previous experience. And uh, yeah, I think these are the some of the experiences and uh, Thank you very much for your attention.